the greater palatine nerve block is indicated for pain management of the posterior two-thirds of the soft tissues of the palate from premolars to molars. Landmarks for this injection include the alveolar process of the maxilla and the palatine bone. It can be described that the location of this foramen is midway between the gingival margin and the midline palatine suture, distal to the first molar, or between the first and second molars. You'll notice in the video the clinician is using the Q-tip to slide posteriorly to identify the depression made by the greater palatine foramen. This would be the approximate angle and location for pressure anesthesia. When utilizing pressure anesthesia, the clinician must slide the Q-tip but maintain pressure near the foramen. You will notice in the video, the clinician is pointing out the anterior most portion of this depression. This is where you would insert the needle to deposit the bulk of the solution. As with all palatal injections, it is important that the patient's chin is up and the clinician can view the penetration location. When utilizing pressure anesthesia, the clinician can roll or slide the Q-tip laterally or anteriorly. It is best to avoid pressing on the soft palate. Once pressure anesthesia has been applied for one minute, uncap, Achieve stability of the syringe. Slide the Q-tip so that the needle can penetrate the anterior most portion of the greater palatine depression. Technique suggestions for palatal anesthesia. The gate control theory suggests a two-stage technique is helpful for pain management. One option would be pressure anesthesia for one minute following topical application for one minute. The clinician will maintain pressure near the penetration location during needle insertion and initial blanching. A second option is the pre-puncture technique, where the needle bevel is placed at 45 degree angles over the tissue and a small amount of local anesthetic is deposited. A third option is the drop technique. The bevel of the needle is inserted approximately 1 to 2 millimeters. One aspiration is given, one to two drops are deposited, and then the clinician will wait one to two minutes before administering the full dose of the anesthetic. Extended verbals for the greater palatine nerve block. The medical history has been reviewed and there are no changes. The vital signs are within normal limits. There are no contraindications for local anesthesia. I will be utilizing 20% benzocaine topical for one to two minutes, 3% mepivacaine plain with an expiration date of October 2018. I will be utilizing a 27 gauge short needle. The injection is the greater palatine nerve block. This anesthetizes no teeth. Only soft tissue of the posterior two thirds of the palate from premolar to molar. The insertion site is slightly anterior to the greater palatine foramen. The depth of penetration is 3 to 6 millimeters and no more than 10 millimeters. The deposit site is the anterior border of the depression of the greater palatine foramen. Landmarks include the area midway between gingival margin of the first and second molar and the midline palatine suture, generally distal to the first molar. The pathway includes the bevel being 60 degrees to the bone near the junction of the palatine bone and the alveolar process of the maxilla between the first and second molars. Bevel is not critical. The dose range is 0.2 to 0.4 milliliters. Complications include edema, pain at sight, and ischemia. Communication to both faculty and patient is important continue to give the patient positive feedback. For the faculty, state when you have reached your landmark. State also when you are aspirating and the results of that aspiration twice. Also state when you are depositing. A positive sign to look for would be blanching.